Okay, so hello everybody. My name is Gabriel Brown with Heavy Reading, and I'm here at Light Reading's Mobile Broadband China event in Shanghai. Joining me today to talk about Mobile Packet Core is Ron Raffensberger from Huawei Technologies. Ron, uh, Mobile Packet Core is, is obviously very critical to, to the subscriber experience, uh, and it's actually an area where uh, we've seen, we see the market growing very, very quickly the last couple of years. A lot of investment going into Mobile Packet Core to support uh, new 3G users. Is that, is that something you see? The uh, Mobile Packet Core part of the core network business is our fastest growing segment. And, and to what extent, um, depending on where you are around the world, we're, seeing, uh, uh, we're hearing quite a lot about operators looking to have some option value on, on the investment they're making right now on 3G and, and perhaps uh, being able to reuse that for, for Evolve Packet Core and LTE in the future. Uh, what, what do you see going on there? That's absolutely what's happening. All of the operators that we're dealing with are not only scaling their 3G today, but they're doing it with an eye towards the transition to LTE tomorrow. And so everybody wants to make an investment today that is good for the next five to 10 years. So there's, there's not a, a, an RFP that we get that doesn't say, you know, must be able to easily upgrade to LTE. What does that, um, what, what does that future requirement really mean in terms of your, your hardware and software platforms for, for the key elements, the, the packet gateways and the, 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 the control plane nodes? In looking towards that future, we've already planned that. So the SGSN is built on an ATCA hardware platform, so it uses uh, the, the merchant IT technologies to be able to scale so that we can handle the you know the 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 number of, of control packets is going up by a factor of 50 as we go towards this kind of technology ATCA platform can handle that where the ATCA platform would come up short however if is if you actually tried to do the GGSN kinds of functions but while we were fortunate to have a world class edge router platform and we use that same hardware with new software to provide our GGSN functionality, then it's a simple matter of loading new software for it to become an, an SAE gateway. How do you know that these platforms are going to scale for, for, for requirements five years in the future? We don't really know what kind of um, what kind of traffic, what kind of applications are going to be running over LTE and advanced 3G networks. How can you kind of be so confident in that? That a lot of vendors have come unstuck in the past with with that kind of model and operators mm -hmm. as well, why, why would it be different this time? I think what's different for Huawei is that instead of trying to have a monolithic architecture, we actually have built a, um, a, a distributed architecture that uses pooling. So in, in, the, in the mobile um, core network, we've had MSC pooling, we've taken that uh, to from the concept that some people have had of just simple uh, redundancy to a pooled environment that where they can load share across a lot of, of networks. We're doing the same thing with our SGSNs, GGSNs, the media gateways, so that as the network grows, that you can, um, by adding more uh, and having them in a virtual pool where they load share, then you can handle no matter, uh, any kind of a traffic that you might throw at them. Another, another trend or something certainly that operators are talking about uh, and investigating is, is uh, distributed deployment models. What are you seeing distributed versus centralized? I think it's going to vary by the operators, but from an architectural standpoint, we fully support the, the distribution of the functionality um, and, uh, and it's not just the kind of the GGSN functionality, but you also need to think about how do you distribute DPI? So how can you handle different kinds of offload um, scenarios as you have uh, layered networks? We're, we're looking at, you know, you've got an environment that has femto cells and Wi-Fi offload and micro and macro cells and all of this is going to become a very, very much of a layered architecture and where you use DPI in that architecture, where you offload um, is going to become a, a a functional choice for each of the operators and so from an architectural standpoint we've already baked that in. Okay, well, you mentioned internet offload or internet breakout it's often called. That's a theme that's coming up really uh, pretty much every place we go right now. Um, how much do you think that is just being investigated in the slideware right now as being actually really implemented uh, for real in the architecture? It seems like there's quite a long way to go until, until operators can implement that and, and be confident in, a, in, a, in an internet offload solution. I think there are different phases. So 
one of the things that we've seen with smartphones, for instance, is that a lot of the data usage of smartphones occurs in a more or less fixed environment, right? Yes, they're sending small messages into the data network, but for people that are actually going to browse, they're probably not doing it while they're driving, we hope, um, and they're not doing it, uh, you know, sitting on the, on the subway, but they tend to be somewhat fixed, so maybe in a coffee shop environment, something like this, and so if you can move the data onto a Wi-Fi network, onto a fixed backhaul kind of environment, you can really help the, the 3G data network. Um, and, and of course, for the uh, dongles uh, that are on laptops, you have a very similar situation. So that kind of offload is happening now. Femto cells, uh, we're spending a lot of time in that kind of environment and operators are, are looking to get started in that. Uh, different economics, different kinds of business cases, but we've already uh, are starting to see uh, that grow. So I think it's it's sooner rather than later. Okay. So Ron, how does policy management play into all of this? Well, in our view, policy management is really the key to successfully running a 3G and absolutely a 4G network because the ability to control the usage, to be able to ensure that your high value customers get the kind of priority through the networks or even just to meet the regulatory requirements like in the EU of being able to you know send a roaming user a message that their you know bill has just uh, uh, reached a certain point all of this is a critical factor that, that just isn't possible without a good policy management solution okay thank you Ron so I've been Gabriel Brown uh, from Life Readings Mobile Broadband China event in Shanghai talking to Ron Raffensperger from Huawei Technologies mobile packet core team